from Rolle's theorem, I get the mean value theorem. What does this say? I'm going to have f continuous on the closed interval AB. f is going to be differentiable on the open interval AB. That just means I can take the derivative at any point in the open interval. Then I'm going to compute the slope of the secant line through the endpoints. So that's going to be f of b minus f of a over b minus a. We're going to be able to find some point x0 in the open interval such that f prime at x0 is equal to that slope of the secant line. So what's happening here? What we're going to do is we're going to take my function f. Okay, we'll mark off the endpoints a and b, evaluate our function at those endpoints, and then we'll draw in the secant line. What's going to happen here is if I can find a point where the derivative is equal to the slope of that secant line, that's just saying there's going to be some tangent line to my function, which is going to be parallel to that secant line. So that's all the mean value theorem tells us. All right, mean value, well, notice what we're doing here is we're going to take f of a minus f of b, divide by b minus a. That's like taking the average or the mean. All right, so what we're saying is we can find a point where the derivative, okay, that's sort of like an instant rate of change is equal to our mean, which is our rate of change over an interval. Note, Rolle's theorem is going to be a special case of the mean value theorem. If f is equal at each of our endpoints, then note the slope of that secant line is going to be equal to zero, and then Rolle's theorem just tells us there's going to be some point in our interval where the derivative is equal to zero, or we have a horizontal tangent line. Let's look at an example. So let's try f of x equal to x squared minus 4x plus 5 on the interval 0 to 3. So this is definitely differentiable in the interval. We could take the derivative of a function at any x. So the mean value theorem is going to apply. So first, let's find the slope of the secant line. I'm going to evaluate at 0 and 3. So we'll note, what are we going to get? We're going to get 2 minus 5 over 3 minus 0 gives me a minus 1. So I'm looking for a point where the derivative is going to be equal to minus 1. In this case, the derivative is equal to 2x minus 4. I set that equal to minus 1. I solve it, and then I'm going to get 1 and 1 half. So let's take a look at the graph. So our graph is just going to be of a parabola. Our vertex is going to be x equals 2. And we'll note, if I draw in our secant line off the endpoints, what are we going to have? We're going to have a line with this negative slope. The slope is supposed to be minus 1. So we note at 3 halves, okay, with the scale done as it is here, this tangent line is going to have its slope same as our line connecting the endpoints. So those two lines are going to be parallel. Here's an example where if I throw away differentiability at one point, the mean value theorem is going to fail. So let's look at f of x equal to absolute value of x on the closed interval from minus 1 to 3. We draw a graph, we draw in our secant line. Now you'll notice here, we only have two possibilities for tangent lines, either y equal to minus x or y equal to x. So there's no way we're going to be able to get a tangent line that's parallel to my secant line. But let's see that mechanically. So if I calculate the slope of the secant line, what comes out? Slope equal to 1 half. If I calculate the derivative of absolute value of x, well, let's write out definition of absolute value of x without the absolute value sign. So it's going to have two pieces. If x is bigger than or equal to 0, we're going to have x as our function. And if x is less than 0, we get rid of the minus sign by multiplying by minus 1. So on one side, we're looking at x. On the other side, we're looking at minus x. That means on one side, the derivative is going to be equal to 1. On the other side, the derivative is going to be equal to minus 1. And at the point x equals 0, the derivative is going to be undefined. Okay, that makes perfect sense because if you notice, we have a corner there. So I can't put in a tangent line. We could put a tangent line in if we come in from each side, but you'll never get the thing to agree if you consider both sides at once. Now, 
Let's take a look. So the possibilities for slopes are going to be 1 or minus 1 for tangent lines. But the slope of our secant line is going to be a half. So that means I'll never be able to find a tangent line whose slope is equal to the slope of our secant line, which is 1 half. So the mean value theorem fails in this case. Let's see why the mean value theorem is true. The key step is going to be Rolle's theorem. Now, if f of a is equal to f of b, then Rolle's theorem kicks in, and then there's nothing to prove. So we're going to assume that f of a and f of b are not equal. Let's draw a picture. We'll draw on our f, we'll mark off a and b on the x-axis, f of a and f of b on the y-axis. Since f of a and f of b are not equal, I can draw on the right triangle that comes off of the secant line. Okay, that's our picture right here. Now, if I want to invoke Rolle's theorem, I'm going to need a function g, where g of a is equal to g of b. That's not going to be our function f. We're assuming that f doesn't have this property of f of a being equal to f of b. So how do we make g? We're going to start with f of x, and then what we're going to want to do is we're just going to subtract off this segment here. This is the segment that's above f of a and below our secant line. So how do we get that? Well, we know slope is equal to rise over run. And what we want to subtract off is the rise. Okay, that's the rise right there. So it's going to be the rise over the point x. So that's going to be given by taking the slope, multiply by the run. The run here is going to be the difference between x and a. So that's x minus a. And then we want to multiply by the slope. Well, for the slope of this line, we have two points, so we can compute it. That's going to be f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So my g of x is going to be equal to this function right here. Now, you'll note if I put a or b in to g, we'll get f of a out for either a or b. So you should check that by hand. So that's going to mean Rolle's theorem applies for my g. So that means there's going to be some point x0 such that g prime of x0 is equal to 0. Well, let's take the derivative of g and see what comes out. If I take the derivative of g, that's going to give me, okay, first we're going to have f prime of x. And then on this term, well, this is just a number here, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm just taking the derivative of x minus a. That's going to be 1. So what I'm left with is f prime of x minus the slope of our secant line. Now, Rolle's theorem says at your x0, what's coming out is 0. So if I put x0 into there, we're going to have f of x0 prime equals the slope of my secant line. So that's my mean value theorem.